In holding up a train, which type of train robber is the narrator? What led him to his decision to become a train robber? In this lesson, you will learn to analyze how particular incidents in a story can provoke a decision by creating a timeline to clarify how the incidents led up to the decision. First, the two of you. We've been reading a short story called Holding Up a Train, which was written by William Sidney Porter, whose pen name was O. Henry, and this was published in 1904. Let's also review what we already know good readers do. Good readers are always going back to a text to close read and annotate words, phrases, and sections that stand out or are unclear to them, so they can develop a deeper understanding and analysis of the text. They're able to closely analyze how particular elements of a story or drama interact, such as how a story's setting might shape a character or a plot. Today we're going to be exploring our question about the narrator and what series of events led up to his decision, and we're going to be using these three steps to guide us. Number one, we read the text and annotate significant incidents. Number two, create a timeline to clarify the sequence of events. And number three, ask yourself, how do these incidents provoke a decision? Let's go back to the question we started with. According to the narrator in the holding of a train, there are two types of people that end up becoming train robbers. Cowboys out of a job, or a tough from the east who dresses up like a bad man. Which type of train robber is the narrator? What led him to his decision to become a train robber? So I'm going to reread the first page because I know that this is the part of the story where the narrator tells us the events that led up to his first train robbery. And that's all here. The narrator begins outlining, outlining the two different types of people that become train robbers when he begins talking about how I got into it here in paragraph 3. So that's where I'll start. Then, in paragraph 6, the narrator states, we decided to transact a little business with the railroads. And so this is how I know he has made his decision to rob a train and become an outlaw. So I'm going to reread the first page and annotate any incidents or interactions that seem significant or that led up to the narrator's decision to become an outlaw. Now there's some language that stands out immediately. The narrator tells us the date of his first ticket. It's 1890, and then says, Maybe the way that I got into it will explain how most train robbers start in the business. So he's explaining how he got into the train robbery. This is significant. I'm going to ignore for the moment his description of the two types of Western outlaws, as I will come back to this when I answer that question. In the next paragraph, there is a lot happening and some things I'm not clear about. So I'm annotating not only what I think is significant, but also what is clear and makes sense to me. Now it's important as readers that we don't give up when we're faced with confusing information. We want to be able to focus on what we do understand. Well, let's see what we do understand. We do learn that Jim and the narrator were ranch hands in Colorado and rode into La Junta, where it sounds like they got into some trouble with the law. I'm not sure what nesters are or what is going on with the farmer administration, but what's significant here? The big event is that Jim shoots a deputy marshal and the narrator fights along with him. They have a shootout or skirmish on the main street of La Junta and then escape on horses to a ranch down on the Ceriso. In this next paragraph, again, there's a lot going on, again with some confusing language, so I'm annotating what is clear and seems significant to me. I can see that a gang came to the ranch that um, Jim and the narrator were hiding at and then they fought. And it sounds like they ran out the back of the house um, and they ended up in Oklahoma. So what happened here? They had a shootout at a house on the ranch they were hiding out at, and then they escaped down to Oklahoma. Then finally, the narrator then states that there wasn't anything we could get there, meaning Oklahoma, and being mighty hard up, we decided to transact a little business with the railroads. And it's good to stop when you're not quite sure what someone is saying, because it can be a little confusing here the way he phrases it. So I'm going to reread it again. And from my close reading, I, I know that the narrator and his friend Jim did do work on a ranch before, so when he says there wasn't anything we could get there, he's saying there isn't any ranch jobs. And so when he says being mighty hard up, he means they don't have any money. Now usually, when I hear the word transact along with business, it has something to do with a bank, like withdrawing money. But it seems like a funny way of saying that this is when he decides to rob a train, because he needs the money. Okay, so now after annotating, I have a better picture in my mind of what is happening on this first page of the story. But in order to clarify the sequence of events, I'm going to make a timeline to determine how these events led up to the narrator's decision to become an outlaw and rob trains for a living. So we know that the narrator started out as a ranch hand or a cowboy in Colorado. 
But uh, when he goes down with his colleague Jim to a nearby town, La Junta, Jim shoots a deputy marshal. And then they have a shootout on their main street. And then escape to a ranch on the Ceriso. At the ranch, a gang comes to get them and they have another shootout. They escape again out the back of the ranch. Finally, they end up down in Oklahoma, but there's no jobs they can find down there. And so this is when they decide to rob a train. Okay, now that I've created the timeline and have a clear picture of the sequence of events, I'm going to ask myself how these incidents provoke the narrator's decision to rob trains. Let's go back to our original question. According to the narrator, in holding up a train, there are two types of people that end up becoming train robbers. Cowboys out of a job, or tough from the east who dresses up like a bad man. Which type of train robber is the narrator? What led him to his decision to become a train robber? Okay, so if you want to read my whole response here, just pause the video so you can read it and then restart it again. Okay, so today we've explored how a series of events led up to a character's decision to become an outlaw. We used these three steps to guide us. Number one, we reread the text and annotated significant incidents. Number two, we created a timeline to clarify the sequence of events. And number three, we asked ourselves, how do these incidents provoke a decision? In this lesson, you have learned to analyze how particular incidents in a story can provoke a decision by creating a timeline to clarify how the incidents led up to the decision.